well, we might be able to chop more out of it. We'll see. All right, on this episode of Robbie V's Garage, we continue right where we left off, cutting out everything that we welded in last time. So, why'd you do that? So the plan is, the last video we left off by saying that we were gonna build some custom headers. And as much as I would love to do that, I would really try and use some of these pre-made headers. I would love to use one, one of these headers. So, what I've came up with is, I think if we take where this shock and spring was located, and move it this way, we're gonna gain probably three inches of more clearance for the headers. And there's another plane flying over. But, um, so that's the plan now, is to take this shock and spring mount and move it further forward out, and uh, then replate it, retest fit the engine and see if we can get those uh, those turbo headers to fit. So I'm gonna just cut this out, move this this way. So basically we'll be gaining that much room on this side. And uh, hopefully it works. We'll make it work. Yet? No. Oh. No. You gotta remember, the car had no passenger floor to begin with. So the fact that we're adding metal makes me happy. I mean, we're taking some out, but we're definitely adding better metal. What really makes me nervous is the thought of going possibly 130 miles an hour in this thing. <laughs> That's what really makes me nervous. Almost wondering if I should just do that. Get all the room? No, just instead of turning it around, changing the bolt pattern, shouldn't really make a difference, I don't think. No, that plate can get installed either way. But if I just slide it back, that way um, it just keeps everything factory, just moves it over. Either or. that as close to that as possible. Like that. Get a little room for a weld.
fall. Oh yeah, you can. Spring perch. Good thing you flipped that over. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll just cut it as small as we can. Not bad for eyeballing it. Hey, the irometer is still good. Look at all that more room that we're gonna have to cut out for. We should have should have done this side because this is the side that's closer. That is true, so we could tell. Oh well. Need to film all this? No, not at all. The impact have the wheel socket on it.
I've got a full garage. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, we got a lot done last night though. Um, Nani ended up coming over. We started bashing headers, trying to get this to fit and work. Uh, it was still a tight, tight squeeze, even after cutting out extra material from the shock towers and everything, but I think we're gonna make it work. The engine's in, mocked up. Uh, the headers aren't bolted on, they're still loose, but um, we were able to get motor mounts mocked up and figured out. Um, transmission mount is set and it actually, this is a, a Turbo 350 tranny that we're using and it lined up perfectly with the factory transmission cross member. Um, now this car originally came with a inline six with a C4 transmission. Um, so apparently where an LS is with the Turbo 350 lines up perfectly with that. Um, I was able to get the one bolt in uh, on the transmission mount. Uh, probably gonna drill another hole because this is the the like factory style mount that has the two bolts instead of just the one in the center. So we got the one bolt in, I just gotta drill another hole for the other one. But everything's lined up perfect. We don't need to cut anything out of the floor firewall. Um, we accomplished this by putting the engine really low. Uh, some other cars that we've seen that were LS swapped, they move the engine way up high in order to get more header clearance, but then they end up having to modify the, uh, the firewall and trans tunnel, and we did not want to do that because although this car isn't like nice, super nice, it does still have a dash in it. And we didn't want to pull the dash out and risk it falling apart while trying to remove it. So we just wanted to leave that alone and try and get this in with the least amount of modification as possible. But I don't know if you can see down in there, but plenty of room around the transmission. And I think it's gonna work really well. So just need to finalize the motor mounts, build our, our plates here to uh, cover up the giant holes in the shock towers, finish welding all this, maybe add some some support where this was all double layered around the original one. So I might have to run some straps up here too to help add some support to those. And then fit the radiator, fuel system, and then I think it's off to the races. We got all the fabrication done. Motor mounts welded in, everything fully welded. Engine back out, hopefully for the final time. Getting some paint on the engine bay. Smells good. <laughs> Smells really good. <laughs> the shop is, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but the shop is full of paint dust. Yeah. Even though we got the fans going and everything, but we're having a good old time. You know it's good paint when your head starts to hurt after a little while. <laughs> so we're just getting all the bare metal painted up basically doing a what'd you say an aerosol aerosol overhaul aerosol overhaul be my first one. just getting all the all the overspray on the fender it'll be okay look at that hey it's better than the paint it has on it now it's house paint this so. is this is barbecue paint because <laughs> the headers so hopefully we will get this all painted up 
Um, we have the actual transmission, George's Turbo 350 in the bed of his truck. We have to get that bolted on. And then hopefully this can go back in the car for the very last time. We've had it out and in how many times? Four five? Four times, four or five times, yeah. Yeah, I think we've put it in and pulled it out five times, but. But this is going to work out great. Um, I don't think I've gone over it yet, but where we have the engine, there was no cutting of the trans tunnel or floor. Um, oil pan with that front sump oil pan clears the steering beautifully. Um, we have plenty of room from the radiator to the front of the engine. And then stock cross member, all we had to do is it lined up with one of the factory holes and I just had to drill and slot one more hole for the, the transmission mount. So other than cutting the shock towers, it was a pretty simple install. Yeah. And then, uh, is he this yet? I mean, there's the clips of us hitting them, but here's the, the uh, final result of the header smashing. Didn't have to do a whole lot. Number little, one little, and number two are a little... little carried away there. And then we just had to flatten this one that ends up like right along the side of that. So, not too bad. When they're in there, you can't even really tell. No. At least that's what we're going to say. Yeah. So. Hey, it's going to be a full stainless exhaust, so that's going to be the best part. <laughs> but yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll keep updating as we go on and hopefully get this thing in its home, final resting place by tonight. I think it'll happen probably in the next two hours. Yeah? Yep. And then, and then it's live. getting on the trailer and going back to George's house. Getting this junk out of my garage. Yeah. Just kidding, it's not junk. It was. Now it was not. junk, now but it's now it's not junk because it has an LS in it. I know I give him a lot of shit about this car, but it's actually kind of turning into a cool project. But I have to roast him for owning a Ford. I can see a spider web right there hanging in the little pocket right there for the lower control arm. See it just dangling there? Where? You look in that hole? Oh, yeah. Anyways. We'll update you as, as we go. All right, we're unhooking this engine hoist for the last time. If I can do this one-handed, left-handed. There we go. It is in there permanently. Look at that baby. Hell yeah. Will he be able to close the hood with a carburetor? Probably not. Well, that's okay. But does that matter? No. Does he know what everyone's gonna see? Hoods are for losers. Double pumper. <laughs> Double pumper. Chrome. It's a thing of beauty, George. Oh, it is. It is. Every Ford needs a Chevy motor. That's just a fact. On a scale of one to 10, how excited are you? I'm about at 11, maybe a 12. Ooh, went from six to midnight. Hey, straight up.